because all classes are direct or indirect subclasses of the class named object. All objects instantiated from any class are related at the object level. By that I mean the class named object level. The objects in this program are also related through the interface named Prob05x. That is because I designed the program that way. Because the class named Prob05 my class B implements the interface named prob 5 x it must define in concrete form the method named get modified data or the class itself must be declared abstract. In this case the class was not declared abstract and the concrete definition of that method is shown on the upper right of your screen. The code that is now showing on the bottom right of your screen is the definition of the method named get modified data as it was defined in the class named prob05 by class A. A comparison of the two versions of the method name get modified data exposes a very important aspect of interface implementation. As we have stated before, if two different classes implement the same interface, they must both provide concrete definitions of all the methods that are declared in the interface or the classes themselves must be declared abstract. When each class provides a concrete definition, it must match the method signatures of the declared methods. Therefore, both classes must provide concrete definitions of the interface methods with the same method signatures. However, even though the method signatures must be the same in both classes, the behavior of a common method as defined in one class is not required to be the same as the behavior of the method having the same signature in the other class. For example, the code on the bottom right of your screen subtracts a value of 1 from the stored random value in the instance variable named data. On the other hand, the code in the top right of your screen adds a value of 1 to the stored random variable in the instance variable named data. The behavior of the method named get modified data in an object instantiated from the class named prob05 my class B is different from the method having the same signature in an object instantiated from the class named prob05 my class A. The code now showing on the right of your screen shows the definition of the getData method and the overridden toString method in the class definition for the class named prob05 my class B. If we were to compare this code with code that you saw earlier, you would see that the method name getData and the method name toString are defined the same in both classes. Therefore, these two methods have the same behavior in objects instantiated 
from the two different classes. Now let's return to where we left off in the main method in the upper right of your screen. The code on the bottom right of your screen contains three statements that print information on the command line screen. The first two statements on the bottom right of your screen call the print method here and here. The last statement on the bottom right of your screen calls the method name PRINTLN here. When the method name PRINTLN is called, the on screen cursor advances to the left side of the next line after the material has been printed. However, when the print method is called, the on screen cursor remains at the right end of the printed material. Calling print, print, and print LN in succession causes three items of information to be printed on the same line with the on screen cursor advancing to the left side of the next line after the call to the PRINTLN method. Recall that the references to each of the two objects instantiated in the main method on the upper right of your screen was saved in an element of a one-dimensional array of type object. A reference to any object can be stored in a reference of type object because the object class is the superclass of all classes. In addition, references to array objects can also be stored as type object, but that fact is not germane to this particular program. So here is a question for you. How many different methods can be called on a reference of type object? The answer is that only 11 methods can be called on a reference of type object. Once an object's reference is stored as type object, the only methods that can be called on that object without changing its type are the 11 methods that are defined in the class named object. That group of 11 methods includes the method named toString but it does not include methods named get data and get modified data. Therefore, the first statement on the right of your screen requires that a cast, which is shown in red, be used to change the type of the reference back to the type on which the method can be called. There are a couple of choices in this regard. It is always possible to cast a reference to the class from which the object was instantiated. Therefore, the code on the right of your screen could cast the reference from array element 0 to type prob 05 my class A and could cast the reference from array element 1 to type prob05 my class b. However, that option was not used in the code on the right of your screen. In this case, there is another option. Recall that both classes 
implement the interface named prob05x. And the method named getModifiedData is declared in that interface. Therefore, because both classes implement the interface named prob05x, and the method named getModifiedData is declared in that interface, it also works to cast both references to the common interface type prob05x. That is what was done in the code now showing on the right of your screen. The cast operators are shown in red.